Welcome to the Business Finishing School Podcast, the Financial Battleship Edition. Learn how to regain liquidity, use, and control of your cash while harnessing the power of uninterrupted compounding. Become a wealth creator. Here's your host, President and CEO of Living Wealthy Financial, Teresa Kuhn. Welcome, everybody. So nice to have you here for the Business Finishing School Financial Podcast. And today we're going to discuss the common challenges business owners and entrepreneurs face and how to overcome them. And my co host is Kristen Kolka. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you, Teresa. And hello to the BFS community. So, Kristen, we work with a lot of business owners and they do have a lot of challenges. In fact, we're business owners and it's, um, sometimes I wonder like, wouldn't it be easier just to be employed by someone else and not have to worry about all the things we worry about? Um, (laughs) but I think I became unemployable a long time ago. Um, so here we are business owners and that's what you know, once we entered this world of business, uh, why we need business finishing school, because thankfully, there are systems and processes in place to help us be better business owners and live better lives. And part of living uh, is financial. And that's what we're all about with Um, business finishing school. And um, really the focus of our podcast is module number 12. But today we did want to talk about uh, the biggest challenges that business owners face and uh, wrap that up with a link to the financial challenges that business owners face. So Kristen, anything you want to add before we get started? No, I think that's a great introduction, Teresa. All right. So Kristen, why don't you share with us some of the biggest challenges business owners face according to Investopedia? Absolutely. So Investopedia found that the biggest challenge that business owners face include client dependence, money management, fatigue, founder dependence, and balancing quality and growth. So when it comes to client dependence, right, I want you to think about you and your own business. Does your business serve an industry where a client, a single client makes up more than half of your income? So this seems obvious, but every day I do run into businesses that get the majority of their income or a large percentage of their revenue from a single client or a single niche in a certain industry. And so if you become dependent on this client uh, because they, you know, you need them to pay on time or they have a consistent need for your product, um, you might be acting more as an independent contractor than a business owner, even if you have employees. And really, it's very important to diversify your client base from the perspective of um, revenue, making sure you can maintain revenue if something happens to that client, but also from the perspective of selling your business. We should always have the mindset day one, even day one, when you open up the doors to your business and buy that URL, right, that, that website for your business, you should be thinking, how can I establish so much value in my business that someone wants to buy it? And if you have um, one client or a niche in an industry that makes up a large percentage of your revenue, your business is not going to be as attractive for a buyer. So Kristen, do you want to talk about money management when it comes to business? Absolutely. So when it comes to money management, cash flow is a huge challenge that business owners face. And Teresa, I know that you've talked about this quite a few times on the podcast. We talk about it a lot with our clients. Um, But small business owners need to be able to shore up cash reserves when needed or be heavily capitalized. And big companies know how important this is. 
So if you look at how much cash some of the biggest companies out there have on hand, it's huge. Microsoft has $136 billion in cash. Apple has $100 billion. Facebook has $52 billion. Amazon has $43 billion. Um, so, you know, being able to have access to cash reserves and also access to financing, because the cost of financing and having access to financing can be a hindrance to business owners as well, especially if they need capital for equipment, payroll, or other expenses. So true. And I'd like to focus on this for a little bit. You know, the um, financial battleship strategy that we propose to our clients and we work with, you know, many times we hear, you know, Teresa, how much cash is enough? Like, I, I need my cash to work for me. I need my money to work for me. It, it needs to be out there working hard. And I always remind them about, you know, really Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and if you add Google, they've got over a trillion dollars sitting in cash and reserves. What do they know that we don't know? Why do they have so much in reserve? What do you think, Kristen? Well, I think that they understand this problem, right? If they need cash on a quick basis, having access to cash reserves can be huge for them. Uh, we know from, you know, 2008 where um, the, the banks kind of froze lines of credit for business owners, and it was a huge issue for them not having access to that capital or not having access to that cash. You know, these big companies know that having access to their cash gives them a whole lot more control over their company and their business. It gives them control over their future, and it allows them to take advantage of opportunities as they come up. And so, you know, it, it is it is by design for sure that they have cash. It's not because they don't have places to put it. It's because it's sitting there to, you know, for emergency purposes, for reserves, and to take advantage of opportunities as they come up. So we need to take, you know, their example, what they're doing, and apply that to our lives. And the other thing, Kristen, as you know, Business owners sometimes take out lines of credit by capital equipment and the amount of hoops that they need to jump through to satisfy the bank's requirements for that loan is substantial. In fact, we have clients who have full-time employees whose only job is to satisfy the needs of the bank on a quarterly basis because the banks want to see financials updated all the time to protect the risk that they've got. And so if you think about the cost to justify those loans, and at the end of the day, who's getting the benefit of the financing of those loans, right, in terms of the interest that's being paid, not the business owner, it's the banks. So keeping that in mind in terms of financing, um, you know, if you can become your own source of financing, if you can accumulate enough cash to take care of, you know, the capital uh, expenditures, equipment, new offices, new locations, or maybe even just a company car, right? Um, that's a way of taking control of your finances and managing your money uh, in a better way. And one other point I'd like to make to that, when it comes to lines of credit, and I'm, I'm bringing it up today because I spoke to a client who actually brought this up. Um, business owners will decide, I don't want to jump through those hoops to get a business loan. I'm just going to get a line of credit on my house. And so he mentioned that he's got a HELOC and for a certain amount of money. And I asked him if he had it back in 2008, because Kristen, you might remember how many of our clients had home equity lines of credit that they depended on for their business as reserves um, for college, for their kids. Like to them, it was a way of managing their cash and Please share with us what happened to those lines of credit back in 2008, 2009, 2010. Right. So unfortunately, a lot of banks 
basically called the lines of credit. So they went out to the homeowners, they went out to the business owners, and they said, you know what, I know that you have this line of credit with us. Uh, I know that you have this balance on this line of credit. We're closing this line of credit. You no longer have access to it. And we need you to pay us back in this amount of time. Yes. And so the pushback is going to be, well, maybe they weren't paying. Maybe they had, you know, weren't making payments like they were supposed to. No, they had perfect credit. They had never missed a payment. And some of these lines of credit were were just there, no balance. And so the, the banks just closed it. And so in their minds, they had access to that cash at any time. And it was a huge awakening for all of us because we didn't even know that the banks would do this. But who reads the fine print when you take out a loan, right? None of us do. So Right. That's, that's a great point, Teresa. And we did do a podcast a couple months ago about how to become your own line of credit. So if anyone is out there listening and wants to learn more about that strategy, definitely go listen to that podcast as well. Good idea. Great. So why don't you cover the next challenge business owners face? Yeah. So the next challenge is fatigue, right? And I think that we all can relate to this, whether we actually are a small business owner or we're working for someone, Um, you know, no matter how passionate you are about what you do, there's going to come a point in time where you just get fatigued, you get tired, you need a break. And a lot of people start a business to pursue their passion. And even the most passionate business owners will find that the hours, the work, the pressure, um, it wears down on them over time. They also, you know, a unique challenge that business owners face is that they have this fear that if they step away from the business because they need a break, that the business is going to crumble while they're gone. So this can lead to rash decision-making, or it can even get to the point where the business owner decides to abandon the business because they're just completely worn out and broken down. And this is where the whole brilliant concept of Superman and Superwoman comes in. You know, that concept that BFS teaches and Rick Sapio talks about all the time is, you know, what's your Superman score? And I can tell you that sometimes my, you know, Superman score, depending on the day that I take it, um, is higher than other days for sure. (laughs) So the next common problem that business owners face is founder dependence. So think about, you know, you're the founder of your business, you started your business, what happens to your business if you get hit by a car, if you're, you know, in a bad accident, become disabled, or you're sick, or even pass away. Certainly, these are not things anyone wants to consider. um, But the truth is that life happens. And if your business is completely dependent on you to produce income, your business has a deadline. And if your family or someone is dependent upon you to produce income, something happens to you, then they're also in trouble. So business owners, of course, must be able to have a team of trusted employees and a business continuity plan in place to ensure that their legacy lives on in their absence or in death. And the easiest way and you know besides the having the team of trusted employees but from a financial perspective right how can you transfer this risk to another entity right how can you minimize this risk and having life insurance a death benefit in place so if something happens to you that person or family that's dependent on you in the business can be taken care of. That's right, Teresa. And, you know, we have life insurance policies that can be structured specifically to help a business owner, uh, you know, transition out of the business, you know, be able to sell that business to a key employee or to another owner, or, you know, ensure that if they pass away, that their surviving spouse, their kids, you know, their family, Uh, It's not forced to work in that business if they don't want to. And, you know, that their um, partner is not forced to work with their family. 
Um, so that's very important. Exactly. Well said. And that really ties into the last challenge that business owners face because, you know, when it comes to being so dependent on the founder, over time, that founder is going to have to give over more control to their employees or their partners, right? Because they can't do everything um, all the time. Um, and sometimes when you do that, it compromises the quality of your product, right? So when you're small and you can touch everything and you can make sure that everyone's being taken care of and all of your products are exactly the way that you want them, the quality is going to be through the roof. But as you pass that responsibility on to others that maybe aren't as you know, passionate about the business or haven't, uh, you know, given the same thought and care into the product as you have, the quality of that's going to go down. So, you know, even if you know that your business can and will operate without you, you may have to find that you have to sacrifice in order to scale. Uh, so what does this mean? Does this mean you're not able to personally meet with each client? Does it mean that you can't personally oversee the production of your product? So how can you scale without hurting the brand that you've worked so hard to build? That's the question. How can you scale without hurting the brand you've worked so hard to build? And that's probably one of the biggest challenges that small businesses face, right? Because it's all about them. You know, the, the going back to the Superman syndrome and going back to, you know, nobody can do it as well as me, but you can't grow. You can't, you can't do everything. So how to overcome these challenges? Well, that's where business finishing school and their amazing curriculum comes in, right? Develop your business frame. And if you don't know what the business frame is, then go back to the beginning modules because it's all there. And Rick does such a great job at describing it. And in fact, it's so important that every single summit that we've had from the very first one, that's the first thing that we do and the first thing that we focus on. And Kristen, I'll tell you, I don't know, we've been to uh, almost every single one of them. And I, you know, I could probably get up on stage and repeat exactly what Rick is going to say, but I love hearing it because every time I hear him present it and every time I do the worksheet, I pick up something different, a nuance that I know he has said a hundred times, but I pick it up because I'm at a different place. I love totally that business agree. frame. Yep. And, and like Rick says, it's all about beating the drum, right? If you hear something over and over and over and over and over again, you do something over and over again, it makes a bigger impact each time. And I love that beating the drum, right? And I do refer to, uh, and I've got to say this, Nelson Nash, right? Our mentor from many, many years back, that's a phrase that he used all the time. If you love what you do and you're passionate about what you do, your job like Rick, is to beat that drum and beat that drum and beat that drum. And even when you think nobody is listening to your drum beat, and when you think people are sick and tired of you and you promoting your business and what you do and what you're passionate about, you keep beating that drum, beating that drum, beating that drum, because eventually you're going to have momentum that takes over. And going over to the next way to overcome the challenges is having a team of trusted advisors. So important. It definitely is. You know, having that team of trusted advisors, having a business coach, being able to consult with someone outside of your business, you know, who can look in with unclouded vision and give you some advice on the best way to move forward is very important. Also, you need to create a liquid pool of cash reserves, and that's where we come in. We hope that you consider us your trusted advisor. We hope that we are on your team to help you create that liquid um, cash reserves. And we won't get into the details now, but, um, you know, we use that specially designed whole life policy that gives you so many benefits. Um, and we also want to make sure that you're covered in case you become disabled or chronically ill or terminally ill, right? Um, and that's one of the benefits of the whole life insurance, the specially designed whole life insurance that we use. And the last thing is to have a business continuation plan and make sure that it's funded. Uh, this is going to be really important when it comes to time to, you know, sell your business 
or if you do become unable to work um, or if something happens to you, making sure that your business is in the right hands. So Kristen, why don't you share a case study? Sure. So this is a, a pretty simple case study. I didn't want to take a whole lot of time with this, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we can do and how we can help overcome some of these financial challenges that you might face. Um, so this is a small business. It's owned by Bob and Sally. Uh, Bob is 55 years old and Sally is 45. They are earning $500,000 a year in revenue from their business. They decide that they want to take 10% of that revenue each year and make sure that they're using it to build up their cash reserves. They also want to make sure that they have a business continuation plan in place because neither Bob or Sally want to be in business with each other's families. So what they decide to do is they decide to, you know, kind of kill uh, two birds with one stone. They start a cash value whole life insurance policy and they contribute $25,000 a year each into that policy. So Kristen, in the first year, Bob and Sally have created a cash reserve of over $35,000 to borrow against if needed. And they each have access to up to $500,000 if they become chronically, critically, or terminally ill. And putting it in layman's terms, if one of them can't perform two activities of daily living, or they have a critical heart attack or major cancer or stroke issue or, you know, a medical issue similar to that, or they have less than 12 months to live. So each of them by the end of the first year have access to over half, almost half a million dollars if they have one of those medical, serious medical issues. And then they own insurance policies on each other, totaling 1.2 million, which can be used for any reason whatsoever, but also used to, to buy out the surviving family's interest in the business and also be used to keep the business afloat during a difficult transitionary time. And then at the end of five years, they now have built up a cash reserve of over 227000 and the insurance policies now total over $1.7 million, certainly keeping up with inflation and may keep up with the increasing value of that business. Yes. And imagine having, you know, being a small business owner and having access to $227,000 on your own terms that you can borrow against whenever you want to. You don't have to turn in any financial paperwork if you want to access that cash. And you decide how to pay that loan back. And that $227,000 is going to continue to grow as if you never touched it. That's exactly right. So the end of 10 years, they have cash reserves of over 530000 And the insurance has grown up to over $2.3 and at the end of 15 years, right, Bob's policy now has over $1.1 million in life insurance. And Sally can use part of the death benefit if she wants to, to buy out Bob's family interest in the business and additional dollars to do whatever it is that she wants to do. Um, so it just gives you options. And Kristen, one of our favorite sayings is the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of financial options that you have. And the specially designed whole life policy that we use, the financial battleship gives you so many amazing options that when you start, you can't fathom how you're, you're going to use it in the future, how you may need to use it in the future. But you know, life happens. Life always happens. And having a policy, a strategy like this, that can accommodate and that can help in so many different circumstances is priceless. So true, Teresa. So if anyone listening out there wants to know more, uh, if they want to know how we could help them set up something similar to what we set up for Bob and Sally here, um, they can give us a call at one 800 382-0830. They can email us at info at livingwealthyfinancialgroup.com 
Or if they have the BFS app on their phone, they can click on that app, click on the financial battleship icon, and schedule an appointment with us through that app. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen, so much for co-hosting with me today. And to the Business Finishing School community, we really look forward to seeing you in March. If you haven't signed up for the summit yet, please do so now. It's going to be fantastic, as it always is. And Kristen and I are very, very excited to meet you there. Yes, thank you, Teresa, for having me. And thank you to the BFS community. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Finishing School podcast, where we teach you business growth simplified. For more information on Business Finishing School or their Business Growth Summit event, visit businessfinishingschool.com.